happens when knowledge gives us a false sense of power. What's the result of that? And why is that harmful? That's what we're gonna look at today. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. We are dedicated on this channel to shifting as many people who menstruate as possible to pain-free, PMS-free, and regular length cycles because when we embody that ease and that consistency, when it comes to our periods, our life up levels with that time that we get back, with that confidence that we get back as a result of living in a, with a consistent cycle that we can set our watch to. And oh man, oh man, oh man, do we benefit from the realization and the use that four different ways of physiological orientation to life show up for us over the course of our menstrual cycle. It's such a gift that many of us are missing out on. So please like and subscribe. So let's get to the topic because it, it came up the other day in a discussion about menstrual care and about diagnosed disorders that are compounded effects of the unconscious, because many people are trying to help their wombs, the unconscious negligence of our wombs. And that is that knowledge, understanding what's happening, understanding the biological processes that are taking place, that we've been told are important to the process from a specific perspective, from the medical perspective, understanding what's happening will have an effect on our womb. Um, that is very confusing to me. And I know why we do it. We do it because the medical profession has told us because they haven't found one. They've told us that there is no cure for cramps and menstrual migraines and irregularly length periods. There is no cure besides the ones that they've created. And they didn't even create a cure for <laughs> menstrual suffering. They have the birth control pill and they noticed that sometimes it helps to regulate a cycle. Sometimes it helps lower the volume, the severity of menstrual cramps. And even sometimes it actually helps um, um, regulate uh, PMS. That's incredibly rare, that's a unicorn. I tried so many different forms of birth control and none of them helped with PMS until I treated the cause. Um, and really quickly, the reason I can tell you about this, the reason I can have this conversation with you um, is because I am the period empress. I invite people to a sovereign nation, a world completely disconnected from the old idea of what it means to work with our periods and to work with our menstrual cycles. Because I do not believe that treating the symptoms is going to end period pain. I actually, actually believe, and my results have shown that we do more harm than good. We get short-term gain for long-term pain. I lived it. I lived it with two decades of debilitating suffering for 10 days every month. I lost an ovary to using, to having access to the best medical care. And I had an early diagnosis of endometriosis because of the amount of pain and because of the growths that uh, were witnessed. And now none of that is the case for my life. And it is extremely uncommon. You hear that people were never in pain and never had a problem and then suddenly they were and then they had it for the rest of their time until menopause. Or you hear that people were always in pain and they always, and then they had a bad perimenopause, and they had a bad menopause. You never hear a story like mine because it's unprecedented. But more and more people are having the story because we are helping more and more people. And so I speak to you about this because I deal in pragmatism. I don't deal in uh, theory. And the idea that knowing, so, so let's get back to the topic, the idea that knowing about each process and why it's happening like this and knowing what hormones affect what when and then tracing that back to a certain food or a certain exercise it's to me it's noise it's noise um because 
it doesn't get us to the end result. It still gets us temporary relief because we're still examining the symptoms. We're still only looking at the effect. It is the equivalent of trying to figure out where a boat is going to go by studying its wake, by studying the way that the bubbles come up based on the engine of that boat. Like, oh, and from this I discern, the boat is going. We're sitting, in, we're sitting in the wake and thinking that we can make sense of it. Yeah, you can make some sense, but again, it's contributing to a false sense of security. Knowledge is power, is what we've been taught. And in this case, knowledge is a false sense of power because the knowing doesn't change what's happening in our womb. It doesn't change the long-term effects of tolerating and coping with this pain. Sharing that you know how and why sugar affects the periods or alcohol affects your periods or, or hormone levels or, you know, the newest, the name of this menstrual complication and versus the name of that menstrual complication. That doesn't, ah, yes, I love this. I love this. Um, knowing what wet means, calling something wet doesn't mean you're wet. The name is not the thing. The name is not what's actually happening. It is simply a name. We have decided because we've been told there is no cure. So again, this is a coping mechanism. This is tolerance. This is our attempt to create a sense of security in an unsecure situation. Okay. We are arming ourselves with knowledge. We are giving our time. We are paying for people to tell us what's happening in our body. And we think that that is it's something because we quote know that there is no solution so this is the best way to cope and i say just because you know what wet is does not mean you're wet so instead of spending your time and your money and immersing yourself in chat rooms dedicated to coping dedicated to supporting each other as we suffer through this thing. At least we're suffering together. You don't have to suffer because you don't have to tolerate the pain. You don't have to tolerate the symptoms of your diagnosed disorders or your undiagnosed disorders. If you don't have a diagnosis, you don't need to spend your free time and your money going to specialist after specialist after specialist waiting for validation for what you know that you have. Instead of knowing that you have this thing, instead of trying to get somebody to validate the pain that you're in, because once it's validated, it doesn't do anything. In fact, it can, again, do more harm. This is a really great example. People who get the diagnosis of PMDD are put on psychiatric medication. Well, psychiatric medication is putting your emotions in a brace, in a cast to correct them the same way that birth control is putting your womb in a brace to keep your cycle regular, to correct it. And what's so interesting is that in both cases, the cast eventually won't be strong enough for how you are showing up in the world, for how you are being, and eventually who you be will override it. And that's why people who start the psychiatric medication process, when they are using it for something that has to do with the womb, they end up down a rabbit hole. Now they have to balance out this medication with that. And now the side effects, and now they're managing symptoms. And now there's a whole world, a whole ecosystem built around their, what was once PMS, what has graduated to PMDD, when actually all you have to do is treat the cause. Same thing with your birth, with birth control. When you're on birth control to keep from having babies and not for a, 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 a purpose that is not what it was made for, then, interestingly enough, you are not dealing with complications because your menstruation itself, your period, is okay. Now, if you start experiencing complications but you're on birth control to keep from having babies because your period's out of whack, 
it would behoove you to get your period together so that you can go on the birth control and not have your period feel like it's in a vice and feel like it's, you know, if you spend enough time wiggling to get out of something and if you don't give up, eventually your muscles are gonna build up strong enough in fighting at that thing that they will overpower the brace. They will overpower the thing that's trying to hold you in. And your period, your womb is never gonna give up on you. 100% never gonna give up on you. In fact, I even have a um, YouTube video about that about the uh the idea that the womb's song to every person who holds it um whether or not it's still within them is the song i will always love you because your womb will always love you it will never give up on you and in fact it screams in pain it screams in diagnoses it screams in all of the different ways that it might be detrimental to your life that it might be hindering your flow it screams at you because where you're flowing is not in alignment with you that is what your womb is here to do. It is your inner compass. It is your true north. So listen to it. So follow it. So be guided by it. But it can't guide you if it's forced to be in chaos. So I'll stop there. Knowledge, sure, knowledge is power. But if you're holding on to knowledge and you think that that is going to ease your suffering, and you're using it to cope with the pain that you're in. You're doing your body no favors. You're doing the people who can benefit from you showing up in your wholeness, including you, no favors. So shift. Why does it work? Oh my God, how does it work? I know that it works, but I don't understand how. There's a lot of things you don't understand that you benefit from and use all the time. So let's uh, get into alignment, go from menstrual disorder to menstrual order. And then once we're there, go get your PhD in menstruation and know all that you want, if that's where you want to put your time. But I have a strong feeling that once your problem is solved with your menstrual suffering, you're going to want to spend your time on the thing that you were here to do. And you may be like me, and it may be about menstrual suffering, about ending it, because there is a way. Cool. But let's find out who you are when you're in balance instead of who you are when you're compensating and coping and tolerating a life that is actually not yours. You were not meant to suffer. No. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace.